kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Water Juice channel and welcome to that time of the year. Yes, we are in the dead period between Madden 24 and the new game Madden 25. Obviously this year is a little bit different because we have college football coming out for the first time in over a decade. Uh, sandwiched in between that, at least uh, not in between, but like a month before. So... That's going to take up a lot of the time on the channel as well, but I did figure, I promise this at the beginning of the season, uh, the beginning of the Madden 24 cycle, the 10-year rebuild is back, at least it's back for the Patriots. I did. I do the 10-year rebuild for uh, the Patriots every single year. I did it at the beginning of Madden 24, I did it at the end of Madden 23, um, and I did it at the... I'm going to be doing it again at the beginning of the Madden 25 cycle with uh, the actual new updated rosters and stuff. But we're going to be using the same roster that I used for my most recent rebuilds with Michael Penix and the Falcons and with uh, JJ McCarthy and the Vikings. And I'm going to be using the same roster for the Bo Nix Broncos rebuild that's coming in the future. Um... I just haven't recorded that yet, but this is just the most up-to-date roster that I've been able to find that has like all the draft picks in it, all the signings and all that kind of good stuff. So basically, if you don't know how a 10-year rebuild works, it's similar to how I do some of my series on the channel. We do year by year, video by video. So we do one year per video. We do the entire season. We simulate all that. We do the entire playoffs, the entire off season. All of that is encompassed into one video. And then we get 10 videos in a series. So we try to rebuild whatever team we are. In this case, it's the New England Patriots. We try to rebuild that team as best as possible to win as many Super Bowls as we can in the 10-year time span. Um, the most I've ever won... I've uh, Fun fact, I've never not won a championship in the 10 years. It was close. I think it was the Arizona Cardinals in Madden 23 that I won the Super Bowl in the very last episode in season 10. That's, I think, as close as I've ever gotten to not winning the Super Bowl. I've been successful every single time with at least winning one championship in the 10 years. Now, obviously, I want to win more than one championship in the 10 years, so that's going to be on me to build a good team and a good Madden simulation team to beat the system and win a bunch of championships. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but I want to win as many championships, championships as possible. I want to build up some of the players. Like, obviously, I want Drake May to turn into a franchise quarterback. I want Demario Douglas to turn into a franchise receiver. I want basically everybody. Jalen Polk, I want him to be a franchise receiver, or at least close to it. Ramondre Stevenson always develops in Madden for some reason. Uh, so I, I just want some of the, the young players, some of the guys that I think could be like the future cornerstones of this team. Marte Mapu, for example, on defense. I want those guys, Christian Gonzalez, obviously. Um, I want those guys to be the cornerstones, be the franchise pieces for six, seven, maybe even all ten years. We'll see what the money situation looks like. Usually in these simulations and these series, uh, the money situation is not super great. So we'll see how that goes later on down the line, but this is year number one, episode number one of the 10-year New England Patriots rebuild series. I hope you guys are excited for the 10-year series to be back. Now, like I mentioned previously uh, in the, the intro, I'm not sure if it's going to be more 10-year more rebuilds than just the Patriots because the college, it would have been if the college football game wasn't coming out in July. This video most likely will come at the end of probably this video is releasing at the end of May, the last week of May. And then we've got the whole month of June for this series to run. And then we're going to be getting like the first half of July. So I might be able to squeeze in one more 10 year series, maybe two, depending on how quick I can get them out. I don't know. So if you have a team you want to see me do for 10 years, let me know down below in the comments if there's a team that intrigues you and you think that needs a, a 10 year rebuild to help them become a dynasty we need to get the patriots back to a dynasty but once that college football game comes out i'm gonna be super into that so i don't know how much madden content will come out in july <laughs> it's hard to say but i'm excited to have the 10-year series back especially for the patriots because they are my favorite team so if you guys go and enjoy hit that like button subscribe to the channel join the juice club and let's get started rebuilding the new england patriots back to a dynasty we are here in the year 2024 
I know it says 2023, but when you have the blended rosters between last year's rookies and this year's rookies, and you're in this kind of weird limbo period before the new game comes out, you just kind of have to live with it. Yeah, I could have simulated a whole season, but I didn't really want to do that. So we're in the, the, the weird limbo time, uh, but it'll work out. It'll work out. Now, we should be pretty familiar with this Patriots roster because, one, I'm a Patriots fan, and two... Um, we just did a rebuild with this Patriots team recently when we rebuilt the Drake May Patriots because they were the number three pick in the draft and I wanted to rebuild them. We did Caleb Williams and the Bears, we did Jaden Daniels and the Commanders, and then we did Drake May and the Patriots. So, and we've obviously done Penix and JJ McCarthy after that. But we've already rebuilt this team pretty pretty recently, so we should have the, the game plan, the blueprint. Uh, pretty much sorted now obviously we're not gonna have the same rookies and stuff in the same draft classes because we're gonna do auto generated stuff there but we've got a good team now in that video i did trade away jj uh jj juju smith schuster i did i think i traded away kendrick Bourne as well because i wanted um demario douglas tyquan thornton jalen polk i wanted all those guys to be top like getters top top players in the league uh top receiving yards getters so I wanted them to get the touches, so I traded away those guys. I might do that again this time. I haven't fully decided yet. Right tackle we're going to need to work on because good old Calvin Anderson's a 64 overall, and he's not going to get the job done. So we are going to have to look at right tackle. Uh, Michael Lewenu, as long as we can re-sign him. I know he has a re-sign, or he re-signed in real life. He got a new contract extension, but that's not obviously in this game yet, so we'll have to re-sign him. We'll have to get a new center because David Andrews is old. I do like David Andrews, but in Madden, he doesn't usually... He, he regresses pretty hard, basically, is what I'm saying. We're probably going to have to get a new left guard because Cole Strange never turns into anything. He stays around a 77 the entire time. At least that's what I've seen. Maybe this is different. I don't know. We do have City So, who maybe we could turn into... Or is it City Sa? I don't know. He, he could maybe turn into a starter, but he doesn't have a development trade, that, so that's going to hurt. Uh, Okafor, I guess, could be a starting left tackle for us, but I would like to get a, a guy who actually has a development trait. Hunter Henry and Austin Hooper are fine for right now, but we're gonna get a we're gonna have to get a fresh tight end in there. Obviously, we have Drake May, and I probably should give Drake May because I gave him star development in the mm, hair in my mouth. I gave him star development in the rebuild, so I might as well give him star development in this too. So, because I do think that he will have star development in Madden 25. So in the offense, I think we're looking pretty good. We obviously have our running back and quarterback combination. We don't have to worry about that too much. Defense is a different story because obviously we've got Christian Gonzalez, who's going to be a stud, who's going to be our franchise guy. Uh, but we have Christian Barmore, who we're going to have to give an extension to because he got one in real life. It's not in the game. So his contract's going to be coming up pretty soon. I do want to keep him around because I do think he's going to be valuable to us. Um, Kyle Duggar's good, but he's a little bit older. I think he was an older rookie when he came in. He's a little bit older at this point. The linebacking core is weird. I don't know what we're going to do with that. I want Josh Uche to play, so we'll have to see how he how he plays. We'll probably have to move Uche to the other linebacker spot and just not have Tavai play. I'm not really sure what I want to do. Because I also want Keon White to develop. We'll have to see what happens there. Obviously, we have Marte Mapu, Jabril Peppers, uh, Jonathan Jones, Marcus Jones, Sean Wade. Christian Gonzalez is going to be a stud. So this is a weird team because I want certain guys to develop. I just don't know how I want to go about doing that. We are going to stick in New England playbook for right now. We don't need to change it. And we're going to get auto-generated rookies, so I don't have any incoming knowledge of who's going to be good in the classes or anything like that. We have D-end and D-tackle as our three-star scout. Do I want that? I think I want linebacker more than anything. I think I'm going to fire John McLaughlin. No, no hard feelings, big dog but I kind of want a different position. Maybe corner and middle linebacker? I wouldn't hate that. We don't need a quarterback. We don't need a running back. Uh, ooh, we do need a tight end, though. Maybe tight end would be good. But that's position one. I don't... Mm, I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? So it's either we get tight end and middle linebacker or we get um, corner and middle linebacker. What do I want more? We have good cornerback depth, not great cornerback depth. But we don't really have great tight end depth after Hunter Henry and Austin. I think I'll go Terry Curtis. Let's hire Terry Curtis. We'll make them... Uh, press the wrong button. Sorry, Terry. That's a very confusing phone call you just got. 
because <laughs> you're back. Uh, I wanted to do this button to make him the national scout. There we go. All right, so now we have middle linebacker and tight end as our national scout. Looks like there's a right outside linebacker and a couple defensive linemen at the top of the class. Very interesting. I'm curious to see how this team's going to simulate and see where we even draft in the first place. I'm not 100% sure. But we're going to simulate the half point, halfway point of the season, see where the team does. Um, I'm assuming it's not going to be great. I'm, I'm guessing like three and four is kind of where we're going to be. We have all of our own first round picks except for we have a Raiders sixth round pick. So we can do some damage with our own picks if, if they're good enough. It's going to be a rough first season. Do I want to make any trades? Do I want to trade Juju right off the bat? I just don't think he's going to make that much of an impact. I guess he could. He's only 26. He's not that big of a... Uh, like a bother. Kendrick Bourne's probably more so the bother than, than Juju is. Khalil Herbert, Eric Fisher, Singleton. Kendrick Bourne doesn't really have the value, does he? Gus Edwards is cool, but we don't need a running back. Hmm... Walker Little. James Houston's interesting. He's only 24. He's got star development. That's an intriguing one. We could bring back a Landon Roberts to the Patriots. I mean, the James Houston one is cool. I've never had him on my team before. He could be good. He's not going to start. The only problem is he's a 74 overall, so he's not going to pass Dietrich Wise. I guess we could trade Dietrich Wise, but then he would. he's a higher overall than Keon White. So maybe that's a bad thing. Although I could move Christian Barmore into the inside and then have him and Godshaw be the two middle line or the two D tackles and then have Houston and White as the two edge rushers. You know what? I like that. Let's get let's get James Houston on the team and then let's trade let's trade Dietrich Wise. I'm I like Dietrich Wise. I think he's a good player. Um but having no, normal development at 29 is just not going to cut it. So we'll see what we can get for him. Clyde Edwards Alaire, Isaiah McKenzie, Quentin Lake. A lot of the same people we were getting. Singleton would be cool, but he's only tw he's already 29. Oh, I might have to make my own trade for him. What do we need? We need a left tackle. Oh, we need a right tackle. Let's look for a right tackle. We could go for Darnell Wright. That could be pretty fun. I don't know how difficult that would be. It might go straight through. Ooh, PJ. How difficult is that? I forget that he's in the league sometimes. Oh, that's difficult. Okay. We'll look for somebody else. We might come back to him. I don't know for sure yet. Patrick Paul. Maybe he's interesting. Makai Becton's on the Eagles now? I don't remember that happening. The only problem with Makai Becton, I would love to get Makai Becton. He's super good at superstar development. He just doesn't ever turn into anything. He never turns into a great player for some reason. It's super weird. But maybe we could be the guys that change that. <laughs> maybe we could turn... Mackay Becton is something good. Thayer Munford's interesting. I don't know. I kind of either want to go... We could go JC Latham, I guess. I kind of want to go either Darnell Wright or... Maybe Dewan Jones. Ooh, I do like Dewan Jones a lot. I'm going to go Dewan Jones. I know he doesn't have a, de a development trait... But I'm a big Dewan Jones guy. I was a big Dewan Jones guy at, at Ohio State. He had such a huge head that it always looked like his helmet was so small. It looked like they had to build the helmet around him. He couldn't just like slide it on like a normal player. Because his head was so massive. Uh, I'm going to do this trade. It's probably going to go through straight up. Oh no, I was severely wrong. Uh, they value Dewan Jones because he's young and talented. So uh, I was trying to get one over them. They're not going to take it. So what do we give them back? I could probably give them one of my linebackers. That way, then Uche would at least have a chance to start. So it's probably got to be Tavai. That's really the only position that Dietrich's going to start at. So Jelani Tavai, I like you, but you're going to have to get in this trade. And looks like we're going to have to give a draft pick back. Am I going to have to give a draft pick back for Dewan Jones? That's crazy. I'll give like a, third, a fourth round pick in 2026. It's probably going to take a second, isn't it? A third round pick in 2026. Okay, a third round pick in 2026 and a fifth rounder in 2025. That's a lot for Dewan Jones. And then I have my second sixth round pick from the Raiders. Uh, this is actually mine, I think. That's a lot for Dewan Jones, but I'll take it. Especially because he doesn't have a development trait. That's a lot for him. 
but maybe we can turn him into something. Maybe he can be an offensive lineman of the year and he can turn into something pretty cool. So we'll do that. Generate the best lineup. Then Dewan Jones starts at right tackle. Uh, let's see. How do I want to play this wide receiver room? Where is Jalen Polk at? Depth chart. Where the heck is... Where's Polk at? Is Polk not on this roster? What the heck? <laughs> where's Jalen Polk at? What in the world? Do I not have him on this roster? I could have sworn this this was... I picked the right roster, right? I'm pretty sure I picked the right roster. Well, it's too late now. <laughs> I can't go back and redo it. Is he not on this roster? Oh, he might be on the practice squad. Maybe he's on the practice squad? There he... There's the two guys. Okay, that's what I was looking for. There's Javon Baker. There's Jalen Polk. Caden Wallace also. Okay, so a lot of the rookies got put on the practice squad when I simulated. So, okay. That, I was getting a little worried there for a second. There's Dial. Okay, so let's just call everybody up. Signed from the practice squad. Javon Baker gets signed. Jalen Polk will get signed. Bada bing, bada boom. Caden Wallace will get signed. Another rookie. And then we'll sign Marcel, Marcellus Dial. We'll sign him as well. Just get the rookies that we drafted this past year up. Okay, perfect. I was wondering what was happening there. Now we're going to have to cut some guys, but that's okay. We'll have to cut Bailey Zappi probably. <laughs> In what universe is Bailey Zappi a 75 overall? That's crazy. Um, okay, so now that we have him on, the, we have all those guys on the team now, we're going to have to make some other trades to figure out what we're going to do here. So we got to cut three players. I could probably package them in a trade if I need to. So let's package together Jacoby Brissett, because we don't need him. We'll package up Kayshawn Booty. And we'll throw in a little bit of... Uh, probably this dude, because we have Caden Wallace now, so we don't need him. What can that get me? Nothing. Okay. What team needs a quarterback? The Commanders don't because they have Jaden Daniels. Dak doesn't. No, no. There's got to be a team out there that needs a quarterback. The Giants. I know that Jacoby Brissett's not higher than a 77, but Giants do need a quarterback. They have Tommy DeVito. <laughs> you think Tommy DeVito's going to get a face scan in the game? He might. I don't even know if he's on the... Is he even on the team anymore? Can I get Malik Neighbors? I can. I can, I can almost get Malik Neighbors. Uh, we don't need a receiver, though. Let's see. What do I want? What do I want from these boys? I kind of want Evan Neal. Because Evan Neal never really develops. So maybe they don't value him as much. Ooh, never mind. They value him a lot. They value him crazy good. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Dexter Lawrence. Thibodeau. How much do they value Thibodeau? Because that could be pretty fun. They value him a lot, too. Why do they value Malik Neighbors not as much? <laughs> uh, Deontay Banks. Didn't I trade for Deontay Banks in one of my videos before? I feel like I did. You know what? I don't think the Giants are the right team. So let's go to another team here. Uh, what's another team that could use a quarterback? Probably the Raiders. Raiders could use a quarterback. We could get Jacoby Myers back. I'd really like that. How much do they value Jacoby? Not too bad, but... A little bit too expensive. Brock Bowers and Michael Mayer. This could solve my tight end problem if I could get one of these guys. Are they high on Brock Bowers? Are they high on Brock... On... Oh! Well, we solved our tight end problem. <laughs> Jacoby Brissett, Kayshawn Booty, uh, Booty, whatever you say his name, and the third string right tackle, fourth string right tackle, straight up for Brock Bowers. That's not what I expected to happen. I thought it would be like in the orange or something. But I'll take it. Because now we have our future tight end, Brock Bowers, who I will give a development trade to because he's probably going to have one. I'll give him just star, but he's probably going to have one in, in Mad 25, so he deserves to have one here. All right, star development for Brock Bowers. Team's looking good now. We're going to have uh, probably, you know what? We'll have Demario Douglas be the starter, then Baker will be down there. I was going to have Polk get moved up a little bit, but you know what? I will. Let's have Polk be the number two. We'll have Baker be the number three, and then we'll have the other guys be the number four and five and all the other stuff. So, all right. Team looks a lot different now. Well, not a lot different, but it looks a little bit different now. And now we got to cut one player, and then we can simulate. So let's just cut. Yeah, let's cut you. You're probably the long snapper, so we'll cut you. Maybe if Madden made a position for long snappers, then we wouldn't have to cut him. But we're going to now simulate now that we made all those trades and got everything done. 
We are going to now simulate to the halfway point of the season, see where we are, see how Drake May is doing, all that kind of good stuff, and more importantly, do some scouting. We made it to week eight, and I was pretty much on point with what I said. I said we'd be three and four, and we are exactly that. Three and four on the year as we head to week eight. Uh, taking a look at the team, though, I did move Christian Barmore to now play D-tackle. So he's now with um, Gotcha, and we have Keon White and James Hughes in the fourth playing the edges. Christian Gonzalez has been revealed to be star. No shocker there. Uh, the rest of the team hopefully will play a little bit better. I know we have a lot of down progress or down morale because we're losing games, but hopefully we'll get a little bit better as the season goes on, or maybe we shouldn't get a little bit better. Maybe we should be a little bit bad because then that would help us have a good draft pick. Who knows? And unfortunately, middle linebacker is a weakness of the class. That is not ideal. I'll go outside linebacker, but that that's pretty bad. I guess I should have looked at that before I got my scouts, but I, I kind of went on what we needed as a as a whole before that negotiations we have 108 million we need to get a when you back kyle duggar josh uche okay so we can get these guys back no big deal let's start with a when you let's get him for five years that'll take him to no let's get him for six years that'll take him to 31 we'll pay him seven million and five million and he's gonna accept 96 kyle duggar wants to be here we'll get him for four seasons four and a half three and a half boom he's back Uche doesn't want to be here, so we're going to have to pay him slightly more. Unfortunate. But I'll pay him $6 million and I'll pay him $6 million, And he should accept. And he does. Hunter Henry, now that we have Brock Bowers, it doesn't really seem like we need Hunter Henry. James Houston will bring back a four-year contract. Three and a half. Three and a half. He's going to come back. Zappy's weird. Uh, McMillan, I love you, but I don't really see a role for you at 27. I'm, I'll bring you back just because I love you. Two million. Two million. He's back. Okay. Antonio Gibson's a weird one because he's just a backup. We could probably find somebody better in the draft. Or not better, but we could probably find a backup in the draft. We don't need Bailey Zappi because we have Joe Milton. Taki Taki. We might have to save Taki Taki because... I don't really know what I want to do at middle linebacker just yet. I'll bring back Hunter Henry so that he can... Oh, he didn't sign. Okay. <laughs> well, next next uh, week or next time I go into it, we'll bring him back. I want to wait on Taki Taki, though. I don't know if... I don't know what I want to do at linebacker, so I don't know if I want to let him go or not. Breakout DB scenario. We got shut out by the Dolphins. Kyle Duggar is a breakout DB scenario. Well, he just got paid, so he's probably on a high right now. I would love for him to go up to superstar development. That would be super useful. Let's see if he can get it. Commanders are bad. Let's see if we can get a, a big time development upgrade for Kyle Duggar. That'd be big. We beat the Commanders. Doesn't mean we got it though. He had a pretty quiet game. Darn you, Kyle Duggar. Come on, man. Going from star to superstar is so hard to do in this game. All right, let's see if we can beat the Colts. If we can beat the Colts, then we'll be good to go. Nope, we lose the Colts. That's the Germany game, I th I'm pretty sure. All right, so we'll do a little bit of that. Upgrading. Man, my nose itches. Crazy. We got focus players to do, but let's go back to the contract negotiations. So I think he wanted a little bit more money in the salary, so we'll pay him $7 million and he's going to come back. So I'll bring Hunter Henry back. I know that's a lot to pay a veteran backup tight end, but it's fine. We have the money. Antonio Gibson, I could just trade. We could probably get something decent back for him. Maybe like a third round pick or something. Or maybe a backup running back replacement. So I don't know what I want to do with Taki Taki just yet. He's only 27. He's not asking for that much. So it's not like I'm breaking the bank to get him back. It's not that big of a deal. Choose the focus players. Who do I want to focus on? What do we need? We need linebacker. And we need like offensive line so linebacker and offensive line there looks like there could be some good Ooh, this left tackle class is deep okay very intriguing Corey heath six foot six great athlete okay Corey heath you've intrigued me david muldrow not as good of an athlete but solid on his skills Corey Heath is intriguing, that's for sure. There's, ooh, this left guard class could be decent too. You got Lance Presley, Elvis's kid. 
Could be decent. It's the third round, so you never really know. Alonzo Lowry, Kyle's kid. Uh, spelled differently. <laughs> uh, decent player. Decent player. How's the centers? Centers are always good. Okay, there's a couple in here. Nothing too spectacular. But this guy right here, Connor Buckner. Bill's kid. Looks decent. Very intriguing. So does this guy. Who's this guy? Jason Palmer, Carson's kid. Also looks good. How's the... Ooh. Larry Fitzgerald? Larry Fitzgerald reincarnated as a right tackle? Oh, we gotta draft him now. <laughs> we gotta draft Larry Fitzgerald. When do you get to draft Larry Fitzgerald again? This D-tackle could be something. Joey Bullock? Ooh. He might actually be something. How's the linebacker class look? Probably not too spectacular. Gary Tatum, Jason's brother. Solid. Dion Hall. Ooh, also could be good. Man, there's a couple of decent players in this class. I'm I'm kind of kind of intrigued by a lot of these guys. Not really sure where I want to go. I know that I want to use one of my things on this guy, Conrad Buckner. I also want to use one on... I don't remember now. Who was it? Was it Lance Presley? I liked Lance Presley, but I don't know if it was actually him. Corey Heath. I know it was Corey Heath. And then who was the other guy that I wanted to use? I don't know if it was Larry Fitzgerald or not. Was it... It might have been Joey Bullock. Let's do Joey Bullock. So that'll be the three guys that we use our private workouts on. Man, my nose itches. Alright, so let's keep advancing a little bit further because I want to figure out... Do I sign uh, Taki Taki? I might just sign him. Just to have him on the team. We have the money, so it'd be better than doing like a bidding war in the free agent period if I decide to go back after him. So, and I might trade Gibson. I'm just going to sign Taki Taki. Three year deal. I'll give him three and a half and three and a half. And he comes back. Okay, so three-year contract. That's not that bad. That's not breaking the bank at, at all. And we'll trade Antonio Gibson when we come back after the end of the season. And uh, and that'll be what we do. We're four and six right now. I don't know how the season's going to end. I don't think it's going to end very good for us. But that's also good for us because that means a better draft pick. All right, we finished the season six and 11. So year number one of the 10-year rebuild didn't go particularly great. But, I mean... It's the start of a rebuild. It's the start of a long 10-year process. We'll get there eventually. We'll start winning championships pretty soon. The real question is how did Drake May do? 3,400 yards, 23 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. It's not great, but it'll get better. I, I do believe that. And he's got the QB of the future tag, so that's always a good thing. Ramondre had 1,000 yards with 10 touchdowns. That's nice to see. Demario Douglas led the team in the 118 or, uh, 818 <laughs> tackles. Uh, what? God, it's late. <laughs> I apologize. 818 yards with five touchdowns is what I was trying to say that whole time. I kind of had a stroke there for a second. KJ Osborne was next. Hunter Henry, Jalen Polk. I was hoping he'd do a little bit better. But maybe that's on Drake May. Who knows? Jawan Bentley, 160 tackles, led the team. Taki Taki with 98. 94 for Jonathan Young. Kyle Duggar had 82. I wish he would have wanted to start superstar development. James Houston comes in and leads the team with tackles for loss with 15. Barmore, 14. Tackle for loss, or a sack leader was Judon with 12. Barmore with 10. White only had 4. I really hope he develops. And then only 3 interceptions this season. So not a lot of production turning the ball over with interceptions. And we didn't make the playoffs because we went 6-11. and 11, So let's get straight to the offseason. Figure out what we're going to do. I don't really know. We already brought back Taki Taki. We got to trade Antonio Gibson. I didn't forget about that. I'll probably just trade him for like a... It's Packers and Jets. Rodgers in the Super Bowl against his former team. That's wild. That's actually insane. I don't know if I've ever seen that matchup in Madden 24. In the Super Bowl. That's crazy. And Rodgers got it up on his teammates. His former teammate. That's crazy. Actually crazy. Alright. Season recap. It is Rodgers winning the MVP. Dak wins MVP of the league. 
Saquon and Max Crosby are the players of the year, and Rasheed Rice and Junior Colson are the rookies of the year. You got a little mix of the the draft class. That's okay. All right, so now all we got to do, we have $66 million in available cap. Beautiful. We can go into free agency and maybe make some moves. Maybe not, depending on who's there. But more importantly, we can trade Antonio Gibson probably for a backup running back just to replace. Just kind of swap one for one. Since we're not going to be bringing him back. And I like Antonio Gibson. I think he's a good player. But I just don't want to sign him for what he's worth since he's just a backup. So we got to look for something else. <clears throat> Excuse me. We got to look for something else. And what is that backup going to be? Or who is that backup going to be, I should say? Clyde edwards Hilaire. If Trey Sermon had more money or more years on his contract, I certainly would do that. It probably wouldn't be that difficult to re-sign him. I do like Trey Sermon. And if I can't find anybody else, I might just go for Sermon. There's a couple good options in here, but nobody that's really doing a doing a number on me. Nobody's like popping out like I have to have them. Hmm... No, I'm not seeing anything really. Let's just go get, <laughs> let's just go get uh, Trey Sermon. It's not going to cost us much. I could probably even get more for it in return. I can get Antonio Gibson 79, Sermon's a 72. I could probably get a draft pick back as well. Give me a third round pick this year. Okay, maybe not. Just straight up then. Okay, let's just do it straight up. I'm not going to get like a fourth round pick or something. That's not really going to do much. So we get a backup running back, which Trey Sermon will fill that role. Uh, and I think that's everybody that I wanted to re-sign or trade away. Uh, oh, no, we have to get Jalen Polk and Javon Baker because they're on... It's a good thing I checked this because they're on uh, no rookie deal because they got to the practice squad and then I signed them to a one-year deal. So we got to bring these guys back. And luckily, we don't have to pay them crazy, even though I am kind of paying them crazy. But he is coming back. So that's a five-year deal for him. And we'll give the same to Javon Baker. Five-year deal. We'll pay him five million and five million, and that leaves us with forty-seven million dollars. Trey Sermon needs a new contract next year. We'll get that done next season. That'll be pretty easy. Next episode. He's only like a seventy-two, so it's not going to be that expensive. All right. Good thing I looked at that because we would have lost two young receivers that I didn't want to lose. Let's get to the free agent period. See what we got. What do we got up our sleeves? Amari Cooper, Gabe Davis. We're not going to go for receiver because I want to develop our guys. Oh, I always go for Willie Gay. I always go for Willie Gay, but he's so good. Willie Gay is such a good player. I love Willie Gay. He's one of my favorite players in the league right now. He's such a good player. Who was that? Demarcus Robinson. Okay. We don't need a tight end. We need a left tackle, but nobody here. Ezra Cleveland. Ooh, that's intriguing. He's not a higher overall than Cole, uh, Cole Sillinger. <laughs> not the right guy. Um, he's not uh, higher overall than Strange, Cole Strange. So it's not really worth it. And he wouldn't start at right guard, obviously. Center. Robert Jones. And Cesar. We always go for Cesar Ruiz. Robert Jones is never here. That's in very interesting. 25, 81 overall. I am intrigued by Robert Jones. I don't think I'm going to go for him, but that is, that's weird. He's never usually here. I don't even know what team he's on. Let me see. What's his player card? What team did he play for? Miami. Okay. Interesting. We're not going to go offensive line this year or this free agency. We're not going to go defensive line. Javon Kinlaw. Uh, we already have Godshaw. I think we'll f we're fine. There's Dietrich. Uh, Malik Harrison. Akeem Davis-Gaither. But he's only 76. We have Uche. We have Judon. But Judon's going to get older. Having Davis-Gaither probably wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And if anything, he could just slide in and play middle linebacker for a season. But if I go for Willie Gay, then I probably shouldn't get Davis Gaither, too. And then corner. Is there any, like, sneaky young corners out here? I'm not going to get CJ Henderson. I always do that. There's a couple of the rookies from this year's class that are in here, but that's just because their contracts get messed up. Uh, 
I think I'm only going to offer Jamal Adams. We have Kyle Duggar. We have Jarrell Peppers. We have Marte Mapu. Jamal doesn't really fit the team. I think I'm going to go for Willie Gay, and that's going to be my only move. We'll give him a six-year contract. We'll pay him $10 million. I don't know what other teams are paying him, so we'll have to kind of judge it. We'll see where that puts us. That puts us in the battle with the Titans. That's going to be my only offer this season, this free agent period. Let's hope we get him. He signed. He didn't sign with us. Willie Gay signs with the Titans. Okay, that's kind of annoying. Did Davis Gaither sign somewhere? No, he's still here. I might go for Davis Gaither now. Four-year contract. Six million. Oops. Six million, five million. That's four nine, but it'll work. Please sign with us, not the Raiders. We missed out on both of them, man. Okay, okay. Is that how you want to play it? That's how you want to play the system? We missed out on Willie Gay and Davis Gaither. So we don't improve the linebackers at all. Willie Gay would have been such a nice replacement for Matt Judon. We could have eased Matt Judon into retirement. And then had Willie Gay be the next in line. But those stinking Titans, man. Those stinking Titans and their quarterback with an 8-incher of his own just shoved it right up me. Ugh. They're eating it from behind. That sucks. Okay. We can move on. Where are we picking at? We have six. We went six and eleven. We're picking top five. Beautiful. Beautiful. Patriots back to back years picking top five in the draft. But I'm not complaining because this is not that great of a top five. So we can make some things happen here. We can probably get a great player out of this. I know that sounds pretty obvious because we're in the top five. Obviously, we should be coming away with a great player. But this is really, really good. We might even trade down. We might even trade down, depending on who I'm going to be targeting here. So let's go to the guys that we were looking at. Let's go to the guys we were looking at. I was also, did I look at this guy? Kevin Cleveland? Tyree's brother? Elite speed. I am a slut for elite speed. You guys know that. That's intriguing. Middle linebackers. Uh, Dion Hall. Gary Tatum. I don't think I scouted those guys, but we got them up to 70% because we... Uh, they were the national focus. Joey Bullock looks like a very good D-tackle. He could be the replacement for Godshaw when he starts to develop... Or starts to regress. And then how are those guards and stuff doing? Conrad Buckner... He looks pretty good. He does look pretty good. Who was the other guy that I scouted? It was... Who was it? Oh, it was this guy. Corey Heath. Also looks good. Also looks good. I don't know where I want to go. I have no idea. This is a good offensive line class. I think there's going to be a lot of good offensive linemen in this class. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. I'm going to scout Jason Palmer just so I can have a little bit more info on him. I'm going to scout Larry Fitzgerald just because I'm super curious. And then I'm going to scout with my final one. I'm going to scout probably one of these linebackers like Deion Hall or Gary Tatum. Probably Deion Hall. So let's do that. Those will be my final workouts. The only problem with Larry Fitzgerald is he's a projected first rounder. So if we go to the mock draft... Where is Larry Fitzgerald projected to go? He's going at number... Not in the first round. Okay, so he's not mocked in the first round. Very interesting. Corey Heath is mocked to go to the Niners. So if we want Corey Heath, we could trade down. Bullock is at 20, but I don't know if Bullock's going to be our guy or not. He looks okay, but I don't think he's the guy that we should go for. This is going to be very interesting because we have the top five pick. We can trade down and get a lot of good stuff for it. It's just going to be a matter of what I want to do. Although before I do that, I should probably boost up the staff points there so that we can actually effectively trade in the draft. So let's buy all of this stuff. Bada bing, bada boom. I don't think we're going to have enough to buy everything, but as long as we got enough to get the good stuff. There we go. Perfect. 
Alright, so now we have a little bit easier time trading up. Man, my nose is killing me with this itching. I apologize for itching my nose so much. I can't help it. All right, let's get to the draft and figure out our game plan. Should we trade down? That could be probably useful for the 10-year, because this is 10 years. So we got nine more years after this. It's probably going to be beneficial to trade down if there's not somebody at number five that I have to have, which there's not. So Dylan Amell goes to the Commanders. Courtney Parham goes to the Titans, who stole our guy, Willie Gay. Vernon Glover going to the Texans. Ben McKee heading to the Vikings, and now we're up here. So let me just do a little due diligence. Make sure that I'm not going to miss out on somebody. They have us mocked taking this Braxton James guy. He's probably pretty good, but I don't think that's the guy that we need to get. We obviously don't need to get a quarterback, even though there could be some good ones available. Um, and then there's Corey Heath here, who looks like a really good player, and then Larry Fitzgerald. There's a couple good tackles. Corey Heath and Larry Fitzgerald both look pretty good, but I think I don't think they're number five worthy. Because there's that risk they don't have a development trait. And I can't miss out on an offensive lineman top five and not have a development trait. So if we trade down, I would prefer two first round picks, but I don't think we're going to get that. Number five pick still has value. That's kind of crazy that we're not getting crazy value for this. We do get Green Bay's pick, which is 31. Not ideal because that's before Corey, or that's after Corey Heath. The Jets are 32. Um, oh, there's the Niners. So we could go right to their spot where they're taking Corey Heath. And then we get a first round pick again next season for them, which is probably going to be pretty bad because they're going to be pretty good. Uh, we don't really get anything extra in the next coming years except for a first round pick. So maybe that's not the right move. But everybody else is giving me the same deal. So everybody that's offering me a first round pick next year is also giving me stuff that's not for the future as well. So either I should do, maybe I should do the Cowboys, because that gets us a couple picks ahead, and maybe the Cowboys, but the Cowboys are always good, there's a high chance that they're going to be in the Super Bowl next year, but they're giving me a first round pick and a third round pick this year, I think I'm going to give the pick to Dallas, we'll take their first round pick next year and pray for some strange reason then they don't simulate very well next year which is highly doubtful but they take johnny goodard with uh the number fifth pick there goes braxton james mitch allen mitch peter smith adam deal i'd expect a lot of quarterbacks to go here because there are some good quarterbacks in the class greg june or maybe i was wrong maybe the quarterbacks aren't gonna go they're gonna fall it looks like very interesting there goes the quarterback cassius monk Steel kit. Okay, now the quarterbacks are gone. I don't know why the Colts took one, though. They have Anthony Richardson. There goes Joey Bullock. Looked good, but not good enough for me. Grayson Richardson, and then Amari Riles. And now we're here at, at 24. So we get we pick up an extra first-round pick, and we didn't lose out on Corey Heath or Larry Fitzgerald. So who do I want? Do I want Larry, or do I want Corey? I feel like we have to take Larry because of his name. But I don't want to mess up. I don't want to take the wrong guy. They're both very good. They're both very similar. But I think Larry might be a little worse. But he's got A's at impact blocking and run blocking. I don't think that Corey Heath had that. Yeah, his run block is a B. His pass block... or his, Yeah, pass block power is a C. But his run block and his run block power are B and D. And Larry's run block and run block power are an A and a C, so he's better, and he's got an A on pass block finesse. I think Larry's the better player. Larry Fitzgerald, I was pretty much always going to take him because of his name, but welcome to the New England Patriots, Larry Fitzgerald. A new right tackle option, or a new left tackle option. He doesn't have to play left right tackle. He can stick it at left if he needs to. There goes Corey Heath at the mocked position he was taken. Now we're into the second round. And we still have pick number five, so we're sitting pretty comfortable. All right, pick number five. Where do I want to go here? Where do I want to go? There's a good couple good tackles still available, but I don't think we need to take one. We still got Presley available. That's good to know. We still got... Uh, Palmer and Buckner are both still available. I'd probably take one of those guys at the next pick, depending on who's available. So where else do I go here? Probably linebacker, actually. 
We know that Dion Hall is a round one to two true talent, which is nice to know. I might take Dion Hall. Does he have the elite speed or was that Tatum that had the elite speed? He's got great speed, elite acceleration. I mean, he looks pretty good. How good is Gary Tatum? He's only got good speed. I'm going to take Dion Hall. That's going to be my pick. We're getting a first round true talent in the second round. That's a value pickup. 85 speed, 90 acceleration. We can put him in middle linebacker. He'll be just fine. He will be just fine. And then hopefully in the third round, our guy is... One of those guards is still available. So let's go see. And they're both still available. So I have my pick of who I want. Do I want Jason Palmer or do I want Buckner? He's a very good pass blocker. Jason Palmer kills it in the passing, which is probably what we need. But is Buckner just a better overall player? Ooh, the run block power being an F is kind of throwing me a little bit. But I think we can look past that because he's got other A's and everything. Oh, who's the better player? Who's the better player? I don't know. I don't want to mess this up. I think that Buckner's the better player, but Palmer looks pretty good too. They both look pretty good. What's his lead block? What's Buckner's lead block? Because his is a D. It's a it's a C or a D. Hopefully it's a C. I'm gonna take Buckner. Development. Hidden development. That's what I needed to see. That was a, that's a weird one. I, I mean, I could have went either way there. I don't know how good Palmer is. Well, I guess we'll have to see when we get to the uh, the recap. I don't know how good he is, but he might still be there, actually. Did somebody take him? Nah, somebody took him. Okay. Mark Thomas is still available. Is he my replacement center? He's an okay athlete. He doesn't look bad. He could be a guy for me. He can most certainly be a guy for me. Other than him, Gary Tatum is still available. I just saw that. Gary Tatum is still available. Very interesting. So it's either Gary Tatum or it is that center. I wanted... I was I was battling between Tatum and, and uh, Hall so I could have both of them. But the more I look at Tatum, he doesn't look that good. Because he's got, I mean, he's got elite change direction, elite jumping with great acceleration, but his speed is only good. His strength is decent, and he's got F finesse moves and power moves as a pass coverage outside linebacker. Maybe he would fit more as the middle linebacker. We could have Dion Hall play outside, and, and Gary Tatum just sits in the middle. That's a possibility. And there's going to be better centers, although there's probably going to be better outside linebackers too. I'll take Gary Tatum. That way I have both of them. I don't have to decide. He's probably best fit for a middle linebacker spot instead of a pass guy or a pass rush guy. Unless we get to round four, pick five, and that center's still available. I doubt it, but it's possible. No, he's gone. Okay. He is gone. This is probably going to be the final pick that I make. And I don't even know if, who I want. I don't even know who I want. Is there a receiver that could be sneaky good? Tight end that could be sneaky good? Ben Hernandez. Oh, no. A Patriot taking a, a tight end named Hernandez? That's not a good sign. Um, maybe I just take one of these centers. I'm not going to hit on development traits the entire way. But this guy looks good enough. We'll take him. He's good depth at the end of the day. And then we'll... Oh, he's from Ohio State, too. That that You know what? That's why I took him. <laughs> and we'll end the draft there. I feel like we came away with some very good, very talented people in this class. We got both the linebackers that I was looking for, which I didn't expect. We'll move one of them to middle linebacker, and then we'll see how they look. So we got 73 on Larry Fitzgerald, 73 on Deion Hall, 75 on Buckner, 70 on Tatum, and then the rest of the guys are kind of kind of cheeks, but that's okay. Now, I really want to know, how good is this class? 80 overall running backs, and then, okay, so it wasn't that good of a class. Two 80s, but they're both running backs. I really want to know how good that left guard is. So that's probably like the third round, maybe? There he is, Jason Palmer. He's a 75. So Buckner and Palmer were both 75s. Okay, so, I mean, they were pretty similar. 
They were pretty darn similar. I feel like we got the better of the two, but I guess we'll find out in 10 years uh, who's the better one. <laughs> that is that is the true statement. We will find out. All right, so episode two, year number two, is on the way next. But we will load up the team. We've got a, a good team. A good, good team. I'm probably going to have Brock Bowers just take over now. Oh, he can't because he's the fullback. We'll probably just have Brock Bowers be the, the starter. And we'll have Polk be the number one receiving option, number two receiving option. Then Baker will be three. And then uh, I guess Osborne will be four. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. And then on defense, we'll figure out what we want to do here. Because we have Taki Taki and Bentley. And then Hall and Tatum. So I'm not going to change Tatum to middle linebacker now because there's no point. I don't think. I mean, you know what? Maybe I will. He's a 70 overall now. What does he go to if he's a middle linebacker? What does he go to? Probably decently high, like a 72 maybe? He's a 69. Nice. All right, we'll keep him there. That's fine. We'll keep him there. Because we got Jimenez and we got Hall, so we don't really need another outside linebacker. So we'll keep Tatum at middle linebacker. Maybe he can turn into something. I mean, he's got development traits, so who knows. But that's going to do it for the episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Season 2, Episode 2 will be out soon. And uh, we will continue this 10-year rebuild, getting the Patriots back to Dynasty Formations. Because that would just warm my heart. So thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching. I truly appreciate it. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.